Right, do you want to kind of gather around on the uh, slope here? It's, it's kind of set as a stage, isn't it? Um, so, well done everyone for braving, braving the cold. Um, uh, the idea of what we're going to do today, uh, as I said in church, is that um, we're going to read through the bits of the story from, uh, from Palm Sunday and kind of have some people sort of slightly reenact uh, bits as we're doing it as well. Um, but we're going to uh, ask Jesus to uh, walk across the water uh, of the pond, uh, which originally I was joking about, but if it's frozen, he can do that. <laughs> Might work. Might work. <laughs> <laughs> Take one of the toddlers across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Um, and um, what we're going to do is, after uh, we'll have the story, uh, and then uh, there will be a couple of questions uh, just to discuss as we walk to the next site. Uh, and they're just uh, questions about uh, Palm Sunday, just to get us thinking about some of the stuff that uh, happened uh, on that day and, uh, and uh, why it happens uh, and what it might mean for us. But the overall theme, before we start, the overall theme is that Palm Sunday, I think, is all about worship. And all the different things are about worship and how people worship, how people worship then, but also how we should be worshipping uh, today. Okay, so... Uh, our first reading, Jonathan's going to uh, read it from John chapter 12, but um, before we do, we need to have Jesus, and Ben has kindly agreed to press gang into being <laughs> Jesus. So Ben, do you want to come, come here? I hold your donkey. <laughs> <laughs> and as we go through the reading, I'm going to pause Jonathan every now and then, and, uh, and we're going to kind of slightly reenact what happened. Okay, so this is John chapter 12. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, Lazarus lived, because Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honour. Martha served uh, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about half a litre of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with, his, with her hair. Right, stop there. Okay, we do have Mary here. Hello. Um, so we are actually going to do this as well. So um, we're going to have to take off one of your shoes and pour perfume on his foot. Are you happy to do that? We've got a seat. We've got a seat for you as well. If you'd like that. Oh, suffering Christ, our humble King, you bore my shame. Be my sin you gave your life that i might live savior thank you for the cross <laughs> so while she's finishing that jonathan do you want to read the rest of the passage and the house was filled with this fragrance of perfume but one of his disciples Judas Iscariot, who, was later who later betrayed him, uh, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, a keeper of the money bag, and he helped himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Okay, so the question for you to talk to the people next to you as we walk over to our next site is this. Why did Mary do it? Question one, why did Mary do it? Question two, why did Judas object? Okay, why did Mary do it? Why did Judas object? And we're going to wander over to our next site which is just around the other side of the pond over there. Why did Mary do it? Because she loved him. Why did Jesus object? Because he was greedy. Boundless love, unmeasured free. No greater love could die for me. Amazing. Thank you for 
the cross when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died my riches gain I count my loss and pour contempt on all my pride and pour Contempt on all my pride. O oh, precious blood, O oh, crimson flow. Great, so Bethany and Beth Page, these are the villages outside Jerusalem, and uh, that's where we still are. Uh, and uh, we're going to have uh, Jonathan's going to read uh, uh, our next reading. Okay? From uh, Luke. Yep. Luke 19, chapter 8, uh, Luke 19, verse 28. As loud as you can. Uh, as Jesus said this, he went on ahead at going up to Jerusalem. As he approached uh, Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Okay, we've actually got a disciple. Hello, Joe. Disciple Joe, the 13th disciple, do come and join us. <laughs> uh, untie the colt and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, say the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went on and found it just as he told them. Okay, so where is the donkey? Down there. Okay, there. Could, you get, could you grab the donkey please? My sin stained heart now white as snow in blood <laughs> you There we go, so there is the donkey. Sorry? It just looks like a donkey now, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just, just like a donkey. Jonathan, keep going. As we were tying the colt, co the donors asked, Why are you tying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went uh, along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes, down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd and disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Great, thank you. So we've got our donkey, we've got Jesus, and would anyone like to take their coat off to put it so he can ride over? <laughs> No? <laughs> it, it, this, this donkey won't poo on your clothes. <laughs> like the original donkey might have done. Okay, well luckily we've got, we've got a cloak here, sort of. If you lob that on the floor. This way? Yes. As you can see, it's my best cloak. Bike <laughs> <laughs> maintenance cloak. Okay, so as he rides over it, and as we go to our next spot, the question is this. Why did they throw their cloaks on the ground? Why did they throw their cloaks on the ground? Okay, maybe uh, if you want to speak to someone uh, different, maybe 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 find someone you don't know and have a have a chat with them. And we're going to uh, wander down uh, towards. Uh, we're going to meet again uh, outside uh, the Northgate Arena, uh, just down there around there. Okay. Savior, thank you for the cross. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my riches gain, I count the loss and pour contempt on. Christ, our glorious King, from death to life, our future sealed, now seated high above all things. Savior, thank you for the cross. Uh, 
Armstrong's bikes when she preached this morning. She said that um, there's a famous occasion where Sir, Sir Walter Raleigh put his cloak down for Queen Victoria. No, no um, Queen Elizabeth, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, and I think that's it. If you've seen the film um, Shakespeare in Love, I think it does that in that She gets out of the uh, carriage. Uh, I guess that ultimate sign of respect, taking something that's quite precious to you, your clothes, and laying it on the, you know, laying it so someone else doesn't need to get their feet dirty. You know, it's kind of a big sign of uh, respect. But that was what they were doing to Jesus, obviously. So quite, quite a big deal. Quite a big deal. Um, right, we're going to have our next, our next bit, uh, uh, which Trump is going to read for us. It's from Luke chapter 19 again. So, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. When he came near the place where the road goes down, the mud follows. The whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all miracles they had seen. Blessed is, is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will find them. Thank you. Um, so we've got um, palm crosses. If people have got palm crosses, could you hand them out to other people? So one of the things that they did was they waved palm crosses in the air and they also sang. Don't worry, we're not going to sing. We did it last year and, you know... And those that didn't like it didn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> but they waved palm crosses in the air and, uh, and they sang. But, as Jonathan said, the, the Pharisees wanted to stop everybody. And they said, well, no, 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 why are you singing? Stop, stop. And do you know what Jesus replied? He said, if, if they don't sing, the rocks themselves will cry out. If they don't sing, the rocks themselves will cry out. So, as we go on to our next, uh, our next place, which is going to be uh, down the steps. Uh, 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 so around the bottom of the steps. Actually, we this. We'll do it at the top of the steps. <laughs> is that for any reason in particular? <laughs> for easy wheelchair action. <laughs> top of the steps, uh, just going down next to uh, Northgate Arena. Uh, but the question to discuss as we walk over there is, um, uh, why were they? Why were the disciples singing? And uh, why were the Pharisees so frustrated about the disciples singing? And finally, why did Jesus say? What did Jesus mean? If they keep quiet, the stones themselves will cry out. What do you mean when he says that? Okay. And so again, find someone maybe you haven't spoken to, someone you don't know, and we'll reconvene at the top of the steps. here I can just see the top of Christ Church and uh, the passage we come to now is as Jesus is approaching Jerusalem as he sees Jerusalem uh, this is the passage which talks about what happens uh, as he sees Jerusalem. John. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city he wept over it. Hang on. Can you blow your nose <laughs> Sorry. 
and said, if, if you, even you, had only known on, on this day what would bring your peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come on you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and, and embrace you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground and you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another, but you did not recognise the time of God's coming to you. Great, thank you. So, as approaching Jerusalem, he starts weeping over just such emotion as he sees Jerusalem. The question as we walk back to church is, why did Jesus weep? Why did Jesus weep? And what we'll do is we'll meet again just tantalisingly close to church, just, just, out, just on the grass outside church, and then we'll have final, uh, final bits, and then we'll go inside, okay? We're not going to reenact this bit, but this is what happened as again to do with worship as he arrived at in Jerusalem. When Jesus entered the temple courts, he began to drive out those who were selling. It is written, he said, My house will be a house of prayer, but you made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. Yet they could not find any way to do it, because all, all the people hung on his words. So the story culminates in him coming into Jerusalem, coming into the temple, again about worship, and throwing over the tables, throwing out people and saying, you must, you know, there's a different way to worship. A different way to worship. Uh, and uh, that's kind of the story of going through Palm Sunday about worship. You kind of completely change people's, uh, people's ideas or beginnings to change them about worship, what worship is, about how you should be worshiping. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go into church, and the, uh, you can hear the music team are playing, and we're going to join uh, the rest of the people in there uh, singing uh, and worshiping God, and thinking also about some of the stuff that we've we've thought about as well about how we worship today. Okay, so we'll wander in and join in. Uh, join in the <laughs> the last time you did that, Ralph. <laughs>